KHW1276 here. All right, today in this video, I wanna show you how I brought my VFO knob back to life on my ICOM IC208H. So I've had this for a little over 20 years and um, the VFO knob has never worked. Um, when you sit and turn it, it just stays frozen. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I do have it locked right now because this is a successful repair and I didn't really even think of shooting a video for this until I almost have it fully uh, reassembled. So um, I wanna show you what I did to bring this back. Like I say, this just didn't, it never turned. And the only way I could adjust frequencies with this uh, was with the microphone. Um, and I'm not really a VHF UHF guy. So this has always kind of been one of those back burner projects. And I never really cared for the radio anyway. Uh, just because of the menu driven stuff and all that. But anyway, it's a really robust radio and these are quite popular. So I thought I'd dig it out and repair this darn uh, non-operational VFO knob. All right, let's get started. So I have taken the faceplate off of the device and we are going to open it up. The rear here, we have two number one Phillips. those to the side. Let's take off our knobs. You have to take off the volume and squelch knob and you just pull on those. They'll pop right off. This stays on. We'll flip it back over here and we'll crack this open. All right and the VFO dial is right here. So I went through here and touched up all these solder joints right here, just in case, put it back on the radio and it was uh, still not functioning. So the next thing we need to do is try to get to the front of it. So we're gonna remove these. Okay, there we go. Now this little plate will come off and this is the actual LED screen itself, but just leave that in there. Okay, so here we have the knob itself. And you really need to take the uh, plastic bezel off here. Because what we have is we have a couple little tabs right there that we're going to need to deal with. Okay, we have... One on each side, so they're 180 degrees of each other. So get a fine tool in there. Now you want to be very careful because you don't you don't want to break that tab. So as you gently pry up on it, you're going to want to pull out. Same over here on the other side. Okay. to do with one hand okay so we have the actual outer ring itself and then this little center push button insert and that just basically goes in there like that and there's your that's your little clicker so this is a like a sealed pot but I would say semi sealed because if you notice here there's a gap that goes all the way around. And this is where the dirt and uh, air got through here to, uh, I'm gonna assume, corrode or tarnish the, uh, the contacts in here. So this radio came from a very uh, high humidity environment. So I'm gonna assume that's what it was. Anyway, what you do, get out your spray cleaner spray around here like so okay and work it you're going to want to work that as much as you can and sometimes you'll feel them free up a little bit and you just want to work that now on this device i did this about three times okay and then i blew it out and then i come back with some Deox Gold G5, 
and I like to use this uh, because it uh, cleans but it kind of coats the uh, the contact surface so I don't have to get back in here and do it again and go quite liberal with it I know this stuff's a little spendy but it, it's well worth it you know whatever $28 a can or whatever that's <clears throat> Not really a bad deal considering what you're getting out of it. You'll get a hundred or so applications. Anyway, and then I just work that and then of course go back and clean everything up. You're going to want to carefully clean up this display uh, background here. So we will do that. Okay, so I'm just coming in here with a little bit of TP and I'm just going to soak up this extra deox here I don't really want to leave a lot out there because I don't want to attract dust and dirt to this and then uh, a few spots on there so let's clean that off a little bit Ooh, careful you want to be careful with this this is the main guts to this LCD display right here and you don't want fingerprints or, print, or uh, marks from the deox or anything like that because it will show up in the LCD uh, screen when you fire the radio back up. Okay, all right. Um, let me wipe off my hand here and we will reassemble. Now, actually, I wanna clean this radio up a little bit. So I am going to clean up these knobs. I don't like this. So I'm gonna go and uh, do my usual thing to it. What I do is I soak this in uh, a little uh, coffee cup filled with uh, awesome citrus cleaner and a toothbrush. And you can work all of that out of there. And let's take a look at the face. I think I'm gonna do the face as well. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, we'll just clean all that up. Now you wanna be careful I mean, these are kind of locked in here, these little push buttons. You're just going to want to be careful. And let's see. Oh, this piece will come out too, so we don't want to lose that. Anything else that comes out? No. Anyway, it takes a lot to get these little push buttons out, but just, just be gentle with it. So anyway, let's go do that, and we'll be back. Okay, so I've got everything uh, cleaned up. Faceplate's all cleaned up. And again, the awesome citrus cleaner that you get at the Dollar Tree, a toothbrush, just spritz a little bit of that on and you can get in there with your toothbrush and clean that out. Of course, be careful. And then we got all that gunk out from the knobs. That is 100% better. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see, let's take a look at these. These came out better. Probably could have done a better job on this one. Some of this will fight you, you know, but what you want to do is just, like what I do is I just kind of put it in between my, it wants to roll away, and go like this. And uh, sometimes they'll, sometimes that dirt's pretty bad. I, I'm going to assume this was probably like the volume knob or something. Anyway, because it gets packed in there. So uh, we'll put it together, finish this video, but uh, before I do anything else with the radio, I'm going to, I'll pull those off and soak a little longer. So uh, the easiest way to do this is uh, face side down. And let me grab something just to set that on real quick. Okay, and we're gonna want to reinsert our little lighting assembly. This diffuses the light to light up those buttons. Okay, let's look, get everything out here. So, um, where did my little where did my little screen go? Oh, there it is. Ooh. And that's clean. Just get the dust off it because that sits behind this. Now I found this is the easiest way is just install this. Okay, this is the actual LCD unit itself. And then just make sure this surface is clean. And what we're gonna do is just gonna drop it down in like this. Um, oh, wait, here we go. Let's put that back in. 
and let's find our little tabs. So there's a tab and there's a tab. So we're going to put that back on. Two clicks. All that works just fine. So let's put that back in here like so. And we'll just kind of work it in. Okay, everything wants to sit flat. We'll take this little shield and put back in here. Now, generally I separate the screws. And what I have here is, um, I mixed them together. So I have uh, two long ones and two shorter ones. So I'm gonna put the two shorter ones back in here for the screen. Let's see if they bought them out. Let's see if those are, are the size. Yes, those are the size. I usually separate that stuff, but um, anyway, stuff happens. So I'm not really active on uh, VHF, UHF. Don't really use this gear very often, but I do want it to work, and I'm kind of thinking of selling this radio. But we'll see. You know what I forgot? All right, well, we show our mistakes here. Guess what I forgot, guys? You guys were probably, hey, get that insert there. So let's go back. Keeping it real here, boys. Keeping it real. We all make mistakes. Even me. All right. <laughs> Sark. Okay, so let's get that out of there. All right, so which way do we put it in there? Well, I look for the indents. So it, this is nice and up. This was dirty. Uh, but what I do is I look for the indents, like which side is up. So I look for the indents, and those are obviously going to go in there. So let's do that. I should probably be wearing my glasses. And we want that just to have a better feel to it, right? They just put that in to keep the dirt out and have a have those uh, little push buttons so they're not wiggling around. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, we'll put our little shield piece back in. Let me just get it started. Ah, uh, come on. Now, I wanted to talk about using the uh, deoxid gold. Uh, over the last 40-something years I've been doing this, I used to use blue shower as a cleaner, and then I would follow up with some keg or deox, um, kind of depending on what product was available at the time. And um, now, for about the last 15 years or so, I've been using this as a cleaner. Um, this kind of reminds me of the old school blue shower. And then I use D5 or gold. And I opted to use the gold with this one because I want this to stay clean for a while. I want some lubrication in there, um, but not really lubrication. I guess I should say I want some protection like this gives without a lot of heavy lubrication, right? Because we don't want to attract dust. We're trying to keep that switch working properly and smoothly and protect those contacts from maybe moisture getting back in there again. But I don't want lubrication. And this technique has never failed. I get a lot of comments on these videos. Oh, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. Well, okay. But this particular... Uh, uh, technique works for me. And uh, I don't really have a high comeback rate on stuff like this. I used to have a saying back in the day, is like, I don't want you coming back unless you're going to spend more money. Meaning no reworks. People would say, is this going to last long? You did, did you do a good job? Of course I didn't. All right. So um, 
Last time I had this apart, I just uh, dressed these a little bit with some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip because this radio did come from a really dirty environment. Not necessarily a smoker's environment, but just very dirty. Um, now, something to think about. Behind this, when I cleaned this, there was moisture that got trapped in behind it on this little overlay piece here. So I blew it out, but not, you know, I just... Used, I just blew it out with my mouth. I didn't uh, use air or anything like that. Uh, if you do use air, turn it down. Okay, just don't blast it at 90 or 120 PSI. All right, so let's put this back on the radio and see what happens. Okay, well, as you can see, she's not a beauty queen, that's for sure, but a good runner. This thing keys up uh, 40 watts on high. I think it's rated for 55 but it does pretty good. It does exact same power output on VHF and UHF. Actually, the uh, the front face is the, uh, the nicest part of the radio. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna readjust this camera. I, 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 wanna, I wanna get a better shot. All right, I like that better. Let's turn on the power supply. Now you'll notice I didn't put the knobs on because I'm gonna clean those up and we'll take it off lock here. So uh, again, the VFO knob was not functional and um, I knew that it, it more than likely was not uh, broken or damaged because it didn't feel abnormal. I mean, these are supposed to move around a little bit. There's give and play in these, right? But every great once in a while, you'd sit and twist it back and forth and it'd jump 10 KCs, either high or low. So I knew that it was still somewhat operational. So it's just a dirt thing. And you might as well take it, you know, take a stab at it. So now we have perfect operation here. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm not really a fan of this menu stuff here. Let me, let me, it's either going to time out. Let me just key it up real quick. There we go. But there you go. Perfect. This is fun stuff. I mean, even with filming, um, I was maybe into this 40 minutes, 45 minutes. But there you go. We have a fully functional uh, IC208H. I was getting really tired of using the hand mic for this kind of stuff. And I'm kind of a VFO oriented kind of guy anyway. I got to have this action. So anyway, there you go. We've gone from this to this and a uh, can of this cleaner you know this is this you know back in the day this be, uh, pre uh, pandemic this stuff was six bucks a bottle at Wally World and you can still get this at Wally World my Walmart here uh, in Salt Lake City is approaching nine dollars a can of this but this is what I use to do the pre clean get all the dirt out get everything out Okay, then I'll use, then I'll go back and I'll clean it with some D5, um, which I do not have a can here available. Um, and then I will give it a shot of this for more of a protection type uh, situation. And um, anyway, on this repair, I just used the uh, QD and the G5. I felt this was the way to go for this. So anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Please leave questions, questions or comments down below. And uh, please subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. Cheers.